I've come to Witten, the suburb of Birmingham, to visit the cemetery. There's going to be a lot of background noise here because where I'm standing now is directly under the M6 motorway. Runs right alongside this edge of the cemetery. We've arrived at the bottom right hand corner of this map and that's the consecrated section in yellow. And then we'll move into the non-consecrated, the green section, later. At the top left I see there's a Hebrew cemetery, if we get that far. Well, the first thing we notice, besides the traffic on the M6, is that this graveyard, at least in this area, has been cleared. Just leaving a few stones alongside the path. One hopes it's not like that as we get further in. Witten Cemetery is the largest cemetery in Birmingham. Opened in 1863. The large stone cross in front of us, Isabel, the wife of Archibald Campbell Tate of Edinburgh, died 1882. I've climbed up a little further into the cemetery. It all looks a little untidy and uh, not really cared for. I'll show you some just selected at random. Frederick Wellings died 1950, age 77. Lucy Ann, his wife, 65. Their daughter, 81. Winds blow soft over where you lie, but in our hearts you never die. Our dearly beloved son, Trevor John Sutton, 1949, aged three months. And then Father Samuel and Mother Rose are on the right hand side. As always in these cemeteries, I've spotted a number of war graves. This one is Private J.T.F. Kirby, M.M., Military Medal, Pioneer Corps, 1947, aged 48. One more from the few I can see from where I am. H.L. Raybold, Able Seaman, H.M.S. Europa, 1947, aged 36. And the family have paid to put on the base of the stone, always remembered by his wife Lydia and children Audrey and John. Rest in peace. A particularly elaborate one in black stone with two angels or cherubs either side of the stone. In fact, there are two more in front of them. And the first name is William Terence Gray of the Royal Engineers, beloved son of Dorothy, and he was 23 when he died. And then his brother, Robert Frank George Gray, aged 50, and Mark Gray, who was only five months, always in my thoughts forever in my heart and then there's Dorothy Gray there's no mention of Dorothy Gray's husband always so many inscriptions to choose from I chose this because I love the surname not one I've come across before Henry Faultless 1956 uh, Laura Guck and then Henry Faultless 2002 here we have one with an angel leaning over the top of a balcony or a book type shaped balcony 
loving memories of our baby daughter, Carmen Samantha Page, age 11 months. This is a rather more elaborate, modern stone with the angel standing alongside. Her left forefinger is pointing downward. This is William Mountney, 1973, and Ethel Mountney, 2016. Along the bottom we have lots of little uh, bits with sayings on them and people are placed there to remember this memorial. This one is Albert Leslie James, 1973, and then Bertha Ellen May, his wife. But if you look at the top left there, you'll see the badge of Aston Villa Football Club. Now, Witten, which is where we are, is the home of Aston Villa Football Club. Very colourful and decorated stone for Florence Gwendolyn Pierce. Life given, 1912. Life taken away, 1994. And then it talks about her children. And then underneath, William Albert Pierce. There's a backstory on this one. My dear husband, Melvin Lane, who died tragically, 1994, aged 47, and his wife, Anne-Marie. Another very decorated stone, Josephine Nutt, 1931 to 94. But on the words we read, we fell in love when we were young and our love remained strong during our twilight years. The kiss and embrace remained as beautiful as ever, for we had found true happiness. We spoke often of our children, John, Kevin and David, and our little Christine, whom sadly we lost. And then he carries on a little bit further, mentioning the grandchildren. Well, I'm moving further into the graveyard. I think we're probably entering the consecrated section. Those people who belong to the Church of England, not quite sure where the boundary, but it doesn't really matter. We're all pretty equal when we're dead. I always wonder about the backstory of those that are listed as tragically killed. Robert A. Brown was aged 29 in 1990. Uh, was it a road accident? I don't know. We could probably check by looking in the old newspaper cuttings. A lot of the memorials here have these plastic bands around them. And I'm guessing they would originally held a notice uh, to the grave owner. I'm wondering whether it's saying that they're going to reuse the grave. Uh, the stones don't, to be un don't seem to be unstable, so I don't think that's the reason. But I do worry when I see a large number of stones with some band written around them. Something I haven't seen before. This memorial in stone is shaped like a lectern. And on the book, and on the lectern, we can see Keith Shuri, who died in the year 2000. The right-hand side is blank, so presumably kept there for Keith's wife. This is to Mabel Hancock, loving mother, 1899 to 1938, aged 39. Arthur Henry Hancock, age 29, died 1902. But you notice that plastic band is again around this stone. And I just feel that something ominous is going to happen here. Are they going to remove the stone because they consider it unsafe? Are they going to reuse the grave? It doesn't bode well for this memorial. 
a nice clear inscription on this one alongside the path. William West, 1912, age 31. Joseph Hobson, husband of Ellen, 1941. And Gresham West, the wife of William West, 1943. So the first William West looks to be the brother-in-law of Joseph Hobson. This one caught my eye because of the unusual first name. We've got Alison Whitworth Graham and Jicola Elizabeth Graham. But if we close up on the photograph on the stone, it looks very much as if they're a West Indian couple. Apologies if I got that wrong. And that may be uh, for the reason that we don't recognize this name, Gikola. We see quite a number of these uh, teddy bear themed stones for the young children when they die. This is John Paul Bryant, little John. Looks to have been about five months when he died. Here's a stone just mixed in with all the other family stones. This is a war memorial to Private H. H. Comley, Pioneer Corps, 1945, age 32. The family have paid extra to add the words beneath. One of the dearest, one of the best, now in God's keeping, safely at rest. H. H. Comley. This one is a double tragedy. Gunner C.J. Nichols of Royal Artillery, 1947, aged 42. And then we have added on the bottom of the stone, his brother Arthur was lost with HMS Galatia, 1941, aged 29. So this family lost the two brothers in the war. What a terrible price to pay. This is a very carefully carved stone. We have ribbons tied in a bow. We have a small cherub or angel on the stone. The stone is smaller than the normal run here. And there is no longer any uh, words left. But I imagine it was a child's grave. Even amongst the new graves or newer graves in this section, a lot of them have this blue plastic tape, which I imagine carried a notice at one time. Very concerning what plans they have for these stones. I mean, nominally you only own a grave for a fixed period of time, perhaps 25 years. You can renew that at the end of the period in most graveyards. But it may be there's no one around 25 years later to renew the grave and therefore it can be reused. This one has the sorrowing angel draped over a heart-shaped stone. Sheila Graham, 1947 to 2013. Well, over on the almost the opposite side to where I came in is this war memorial. It carries some 60 names and it lists the names of those that gave their lives for their country in the Great War and who are buried in this cemetery, but they don't have their own headstone, probably because no one's quite sure where they're buried. So here are 60 names who have unmarked graves here. I just picked panel 5 as an example with the names. Starts with Private H. Davis, Gibson, Hathaway. You can see the names as they run down. Well up in the far corner is this walled off section 
full of very large memorial stones and very well kept. And I think from what I saw on the map, this is the Hebrew cemetery. This cemetery is vast. Just when you think you've reached the end, you go across a bit of clear ground and you find thousands of more grave stones, graves. Amongst the more modern stones, this one caught my eye. It's got two cartoon characters and it is for a five-year-old boy, Donald Pottinger Sadia. And how about this one for Michael Edward Fanning? I don't think they got the face quite right, but it's an interesting way of doing a memorial. Here's one of a soldier. That's done very nicely. He died aged 24. You can probably see it's started to hammer down with rain now. This one to William Thomas Powers. The top right hand side it's got a picture of Nichols Power Station. So did Bill Powers work at the power station? That's certainly the implication. Dennis Walters. There are six pictures at the top. We've got golf, rugby, horses for horse racing, cricket, football and a greyhound. Very much a sports fan. Robert Joseph Benton. I can recognise Noddy on the right. You'll have to tell me who the one on the left is. And we even have a picture of the little almost two year old lad who lost his life. So sad, so poignant. There is so much to see in this cemetery. Particularly if you can get past the early parts that they've cleared and get into the main part of the cemetery, these parts that are still being used. You could spend days here having a look at these memorials. I'm going to call it a day at this point. So till the next time,